Hello, and welcome to my tutorial series on how to make a 3D game in Unity. In this video, we're going to give our little guy some attack animation and get him ready for adventure. Let's begin. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our scripts folder. We're going to open up our player controller script, and we're going to talk for a second about what is either called functions or methods. Uh, if you heard the word function or you hear the word method, it's pretty much talking about the same thing. And basically what a function or method is, it is a way to organize and run our code. Up here we actually have in our code already two functions. We have a void start function and a void update function. And the reason why it says void in front is because these are functions that don't return a value. They just simply run the code and that's it. An example of something that would return a value, let's say I have a function and I just call it math function for no particular reason, parentheses and brackets. So in this case, I would have, or excuse me, in this case, I have a function which returns an integer and which is basically a whole number. So what my code would do, actually, let's, let's expand upon this just a second. Let's Let's create an int, let's call it num, and let's set it equal to two. So now I have an integer, I named it num, and I set it equal to two. And what I would do is I would pass my integer in here, and then I would just create, let's say, some sort of mathematical formula. I would say num2 for number two is going to equal to num plus one or something whatever whatever i want a mathematical formula to be i'm going to basically say put the two in here and add it to one and then you're going to get another number and then i'm going to put return num2 so basically it's going to do the mathematical operation and it's going to return an integer which is going to be num2 so that's an example of how a function or a function that is supposed to return something would look like. But we're not quite doing that yet. We'll probably do one in the future. Right now, we're going to take all of our code here, all this movement code, which is just stacked one on top of the other here in our void update, and we're going to put it in another function simply just to make things look neater. So I'm actually going to create a private void, and I'm going to call it movement i'm going to put a parentheses this is otherwise the parentheses is otherwise known as an argument and a brackets and this is as i've typed earlier and how i'm typing now this is pretty much how you um what the syntax is for a function so i'm going to take all this i'm going to right click i'm going to hit cut i'm going to paste it into here and now in my void update i'm just going to put movement with a parentheses uh, go to the end and add a semicolon so now basically what happens when the update function runs it's going to automatically run my movement function which is this right here and all the code that's in it and it doesn't return anything once the code runs once our, once our movements are in action and they're over with it ends so let's hit save and let's see how we did so if you're wondering down here in the console it says asset player controller warning the final player i'm sorry the field player controller.num is assigned but it is i'm sorry excuse me but its value is never used it's referring to this int right here that i created and because i didn't assign it to anything it's just asking why is it there so let's go back in and now it's gone and let's hit play. And now nothing's going to change between um, what was what was done before and now. The only difference is, is that we moved all our code into that function just to make our void update a little easier. Our little character here, he moves around all the same. But in our code, this looks a whole lot easier. because, And it's going to be very helpful in the future because we're going to be putting a lot of stuff in this void update in, through the process of this game. So we want to make sure we organize ourselves a little better early on. So now that we've learned all this, let's go ahead and create another function. And this will be for our attack. So we're going to create another function. It's going to be called attack. 
and it's going to play our attack animation. And up here, just while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and I believe we discussed if statements in a previous video. Yes, we did it here. So if input dot get the down and in parentheses again, we're going to put key code dot space. And you actually, I'm just using the space bar for my attack. Um, you can pick any key you want. I don't know. I'm just going to leave it at that for now. If I feel I need another key I want to use, I'll just change it later. And at the end of this, we're going to make a bracket. So just to run over what's going on here, actually, let me just put our function in here. There we go. So create a little space. So I'm saying if I hit the space bar, if the input dot get key down key code dot space, if I hit the space bar, then it's going to run my attack function. And here's my attack function. And in a little bit, we're going to put our animation in there. So hit the space bar and run the attack animation. And actually, there's gonna, probably going to be more than the attack animation in here later on. So that's why I created well, excuse me, that's why I wanted to create a function for this. So we're going to hit save. And we're going to go back here and we're going to start using our animator again. Remember this guy? And over here we have our, actually we have a couple different attack animations to choose from. Let's, let's just take a look at these actually. Probably would have been helpful if I screen this a little better. But let's go ahead, check out animations and what's this normal attack one. So let's go ahead and hit play. So he just kind of swings his sword a little bit, just a little bit forward. And then normal attack two. And he does a little bit more of a of an involved attack there. Actually, we'll we'll probably use them both. We'll just start with the normal attack one. And so that's it right there. So we're gonna separate it from the herd here by clicking that. And now we're gonna do something a little different in that. We're going to connect it to this any state bar. And basically what this does is that it means that I can initiate this animation from any state. It can happen from idle and it can happen from run. So that's the meaning behind that one right there. So we're going to create a transition and we're going to connect it to our sword animation. And so now let's go back to our script. Actually, we're not going to go back to our script because we have to create a new parameter because we have our movement parameter based on our speed here. So we're going to add a new parameter and we're going to make this one a trigger. And we're going to call this trigger attack. And we're going to click on actually we're going to click on this transition here. And over here where it says list is empty our conditions, we're going to click add. C speed, click on this, this drop down menu and click attack. And that's going to be the trigger that's going to trigger our animation. And then up here, now we don't want an exit time for this. And we want our duration here to be zero because we just want, we don't want to casually tr uh, transition from the, uh, from either the idle or the run to our attack. We just want them to go right into the attack. So we're going to go over here. I'm going to hit save and now we're going to go into our script. So back in our script, I'm going to start off by putting a little comment here and I don't think I've talked about comments yet, but I'm just going to put here attack animation. So a comment is basically notes you can put in your code for yourself or for others. Whenever you hit forward slash twice, it automatically turns green as you can see there and you can just type anything there that you want to say, any note you want to put in for yourself or others. And this is you, I'm, I'm, excuse me. And anything you write will not be used in the code. This is, this is not changing or affecting anything when you write comments like this. So I put a little comment up here that basically tells me this is the attack animation. So I know what's going on because there's probably going to be other things in this attack function. So I want to make sure I keep it organized as we go along. So 
what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply our animation. Anim set trigger parentheses quotation marks. And we're going to put the word attack. And at the end, we're going to put a semicolon. And just remember that just like here and here, you have to spell this exactly how you spelled this. I spelled this with a capital A. I have to spell this with a capital A. And just to recap, we have our if statement here that if we hit the space key, it's going to run the attack function. And down here is our attack function. And it basically says that it's going to it's going to run an animation based on a trigger, which is called attack. And this is where we're telling it that attacks being enacted. Going to hit save and let's see how this all came out. So back in Unity, we're going to go up to our game. We're going to hit play. And we're going to walk around. We can still walk forward, back into the side. And now I'm going to hit my space bar. And there he goes. He's attacking, but he is not stopping. So we need to fix that. And that for that, excuse me, for that, we're going to go back in our animator and we have a transition to our attack animation, but we don't have a transition back. And that arrow is going to go right back to our idle animation right there. And we're going to click on that transition and we're not going to have a parameter for it. We don't need one. But we do need an exit time. We need a has exit time. We want that checked. And we want a fixed duration. But like last time, actually, no, we want our exit time to be one. And we want our transition duration to be zero. So we're going to put that in. We're going to hit save. We're going to hit play. And now I'm going to move my guy around. I'm going to swing my sword with my space bar and he stops each time gonna move him backward i'm gonna have him run or walk we haven't gotten to run yet and i can go ahead and he can swing and he has that little pause there because he's going back to the idle maybe we'll fix that i'm not sure yet but our animation is working great and our little guy can go into action So that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and support me on Patreon. All links are in the description below. See you next time.